everyone in this video we are going to learn biodiversity which is chapter number 4 of environment course biodiversity means variability of living organism existing on our earth so this variation and variability of life form is actually biodiversity and the main content of this chapter are definition of biodiversity along with different levels like genetic species ecosystem level biodiversity second india as a mega biodiverse nation different kinds of biogeographical zones of our country biodiversity hotspot endemic and endangered species of india iucn red list criteria value of biodiversity that means importance of biodiversity threats to biodiversity like habitat loss poaching biological invasion biodiversity conservation strategy like in situ ex situ methods which are used for protecting plants and animals along with different terms like keystone flagship umbrella indicator species and different case studies like project tiger project elephant vulture breeding program project great indian bustard crocodile conservation project etc so biodiversity is variation in life form that exists on earth we find variations in life form at all level on land there are different types of plants and animal same way in aquatic ecosystem diversity of life is really important so biodiversity means variations and variability of living organism from all sources including terrestrial marine and other aquatic ecosystems along with ecological complexes of which they are part biodiversity that means variation in life form exist at three levels first genetic level second there are variations at the level of species and third variations in life form are also observed at the at this third level that is ecosystem level biodiversity so first is genetic level biodiversity so within a particular species we find lot of variations let us take our own species humans or homo sapiens we all are different in intellectual behavior we are different in appearance and we have different uh, skin color hair color etc so these variations are possible only because of different genetic composition that means our dna rna varies from each other so genetic level biodiversity means the genes which are found in organism show different kinds of combination and these combination result in variability genes are basically dna rna they are the basic hereditary information which are transmitted from one generation to another so when genes within the same species show different version due to new combination it is called genetic variability not only in humans these genetic variations are present in other species too so within the members of any other species for example let's say rose roses are of different color and that is possible due to genetic variation same way rice are different in appearance some of the rices are white some rice grains are pale white and some are brown so these variations in oryza sativa or rice species is taking place due to different gene combinations so gene combination result in lot of variations in life form and these variations are within the member of same species second type of biodiversity exist at the level of a species see around yourself you are surrounded by numerous species for example there are many types of producers like grass flowering plant trees there is also variation in species like herbivore carnivore birds etc so in an area different types of species comprise of species level biodiversity so species level biodiversity is the variability found within the population of species or between different species of a community community is a subunit of ecosystem where we only consider living organism so if population of different living organism is considered then it is community and we do find in community different types of population belonging to different species like in this picture you can see a uh, population of tree population of grass flowering plant herbivore carnivore and bird so overall species level biodiversity represent species richness and their abundance in the community 
We can even calculate a species richness by using Shannon Wiener index and Simpson index. So scientists use the complex equation to find out exact biodiversity of a place and this index is known as Shannon Wiener diversity in index. As per estimate by one of the famous scientists Wilson in 1992, it is predicted that on earth we have around 10 million to 50 million species. That is really a huge number. But we have explored only few of them. So we only know about 1.5 million living species and we do, do know about 3 lakh fossil species. So these are the species for which we have done scientific analysis and we have named them. But however, at the rate by which we are causing harm to the environment, it is quite likely that large fraction of these species may become extinct even before they are discovered or enlisted. Third level of biodiversity exists at ecosystem. So ecosystem, that means a place where we have living organism interacting with abiotic component. Ecosystem can also be defined as a place which is a subunit of biosphere and we find living non-living components interdependent on each other. For example, forest is an ecosystem, grassland, desert, they are all ecosystem. So in any ecosystem, we find lot of variations in life form. For example, in aquatic ecosystem, we find fishes along with water. So there is variations uh, in the number of species present in aquatic ecosystem. The life form which occur in aquatic ecosystem is totally different from what is present in desert ecosystem. So in desert we find more of cactus species and in abiotic component we find sand. So the species differ from ecosystem to ecosystem. Same way there are grassland ecosystem which have lot of herbivores and forest ecosystem which have tall trees and also many carnivorous and herbivorous species. So each ecosystem is unique in terms of their own biotic and abiotic composition. There is also uniqueness in terms of food chain and food web. So we can say that ecosystem level biodiversity is important because it includes complexity in ecological niche. Ecological niche means the place where an organism live and what role that organism play in ecosystem. For example, tiger is in forest and it is a carnivorous species. So each ecosystem has its unique organism with their own niche and each species is playing a particular role in ecosystem. So all the ecosystem also are complex in terms of food chain. So there is a set food chain which operate in forest which differs from desert ecosystem. Every ecosystem is also unique in terms of trophic structure. So every ecosystem has Trophic structure means that these are the stages at which energy exchange take place. For example, in aquatic ecosystem, we find phytoplanktons occupying first trophic level. So these are algae or small plants that are at first trophic level and they capture sunlight directly. Phytoplanktons are consumed by zooplanktons. So zooplanktons occur at trophic level number two. Trophic level number three is occupied by small fish and trophic level 4 is occupied by big fish. So at every trophic level we are finding set uh, organisms. Now what organism we are observing in aquatic ecosystem, they will be completely different from what we have in forest. So ecosystem level biodiversity means variability at the level of ecosystem. So every ecosystem is unique in terms of trophic structure, food chain, ecological niche. Also there are variations which we observe in abiotic component and biotic components. So for example, abiotic component of aquatic ecosystem is water, but abiotic component in desert is mostly sand. Same way biotic component vary from ecosystem to ecosystem. So ecosystem level biodiversity means diversity of ecological complexity and there are a lot of variation in ecosystem in terms of ecological niche, trophic structure, food web, nutrient cycling, etc. Ecosystem also show variation with respect to physical parameters like moisture, temperature, altitude, precipitation. All these parameters differ. Thus, there occur tremendous diversity within ecosystem along different physical parameters. 
So we can summarize here that biodiversity exists at three levels. First, at a very broad level, we can say ecosystem level biodiversity. Within ecosystem, we find species level biodiversity where different species are present. And within a species, for example, within humans, we find lot of variation. So each species also show variations and differences in life form due to new uh, type of genetic combination. So that is genetic level biodiversity. Biodiversity is very, very important. Let's see the importance of biodiversity in detail. So first is direct value. So biodiversity play very important role because we are obtaining certain substances from nature, plant or animals, which we are using directly. And direct value is also easy to associate with monetary benefit. We can directly put a price tag on them. For example, we can say food. Food is obtained from plant and there is a price tag that can be associated with food. So direct value are obtained directly from plants or animals and also they have a price tag attached to them. On the other hand, second type of value is indirect value. Indirect value means those benefits which we are obtaining from plants and animal and those benefits are difficult to be associated with any monetary uh, terms. Direct value is further of two type, consumptive value and second productive value. Consumptive value means those substances which we directly consume from nature and also we can attach price to them. Productive means when we convert substances into some kind of commodity and then add price to them. Indirect value are difficult to be associated with any kind of monetary gain and these are of following types. First, social and cultural value. Second, ethical value. Third, aesthetic value. Fourth, optional value. And fifth, environmental service value. Let's see the first, direct value. So direct value means those benefits which we get from plants and animals and the benefits can directly be correlated to monetary terms. In this, we have two types, consumptive value. So consumptive value means those substances which we, we are getting from nature, we are using it in the same manner and we can also attach price to them. For example, food. We are obtaining large number of food, fruits, etc. from nature and there is a price which is attached to all of them. Second is medicine. We get lot of medicines. So many medicines are directly extracted from plant leaves or plant parts. For example, penicillin, which is an antibiotic prepared from fungus, penicillium. Digitalis. Digitalis is a plant that is used for manufacturing digitalin and it is a cure for heart diseases. Catharanthus play very important role in curing cancer. Or another consumptive value which we can note here is fuel wood. Fuel wood is collected from the forest and it is used for burning and for, make, for cooking purpose. So fuel wood comes under direct value. Second type of direct value is productive value. Productive value include those substances which are obtained from nature and then converted into some kind of commodity and product. So this commodity and product has monetary value attached to it. For example, say the timber play very important role in manufacturing of furnitures like chair, table, etc. So these chair and table are the new products. So these uh, we can say that biodiversity has a productive value. So the products can be sold in the market and there is a price tag attached to these products. Same way, from cow we extract milk. Milk is the product which is sold in the market and thereby it comes under productive use value. Elephant are hunted down for their tusk. Tusk is valuable in the market because many statues are made out of it. And unfortunately, productive use value is sometimes responsible for uh, decline of the species number like in this case elephant has now been pushed to endangered category just because of hunting for their teeth so after direct value let's learn indirect value indirect value are those benefits which we get from plants and animal and they are difficult to be associated with any kind of monetary terms so that means we cannot put any kind of price tag on them they are of following types, social and cultural value, ethical value, aesthetic value, 
optional value and environmental service value so first is social value so in uh, different parts of the world plants and animal are in association with society and religious belief for example in india banyan tree is worshiped during vat savitri festival it is believed that married ladies they have to tie the thread around banyan tree which could lead to long life of their husband such type of rituals help uh, in propagating the traditional belief from one generation to another same way in india tulsi is considered to be sacred and worshiped in almost every home not only this even in other religion like christianity we consider christmas tree to be sacred and it is decorated during christmas festival rituals also revolve around use of plant parts like flower leaves etc these are offered to the god even cow is considered to be sacred in india animal like snake are also worshiped in india so these traditional belief which revolve around plant and animal are transferred from one generation to another because of the existence of these animal second is ethical value ethical value refers to the moral value so we consider that animals and plants have a moral value attached we should live and let live other species so there is propagation of this ethical and moral value from one generation to another only because of existence of these animals not only this we feel really sorry for some of the species which are no longer there like dodo bird or passenger pigeon third is aesthetic value aesthetic value refers to the beauty of the place so a place which is green and clean is always very attractive for everyone there is some kind of pleasure that we get from the sight which is quite green not only this the greenery also affect our psychology many diseases can be cured by staying in a green or peaceful environment so this aesthetic value which is associated with biodiversity cannot be assessed in terms of money but it is there we all are getting benefited by nature not only this many people are willing to pay for uh, you know entering into wilderness areas like for example national park this mode by which we can earn money from nature is known as ecotourism for this optional value optional value means potential of plant or animal to be useful in future so this is an indirect benefit which may which we may explore in future right now we not we may not have discovered any plant which might be there in kerala or in remote parts of the world but in future that species may become really useful to us so we should let that option open for us to explore them in coming years and this is known as optional value fifth is environmental service value environmental service value is associated with plants and animal a place which has lot of plants and animal in it so that place automatically be become very rich it becomes very healthy ecosystem a balanced ecosystem and balanced ecosystem is associated with different types of benefit in such area we can get provisioning service that means some kind of good that we can obtain directly from ecosystem so if ecosystem is healthy due to plants and animal we can get food fuel wood fiber timber etc second we can also get lot of regulating service benefit that means ecosystem which is healthy because of existence of several plant also serves the purpose of controlling various environmental processes in such a place disaster will be very less there will be less kind of uh, flood uh, issues there will be lot of water purification pest will be regulated climate will automatically be maintained these comes under regulating services third a place where plants and animals are quite uh, rich in number that place also serve for cultural benefits in that place people would like to go for spiritual needs for recreational for aesthetic beauty and for educational purpose lastly a place where we find lot of plants and animal also have lot of supporting service we can expect hydrological cycle to be maintained soil is formed in right manner nutrient cycle and primary production primary production means photosynthetic process by which organic matter is formed all of these benefits will continue 
and thereby we can say that this indirect value is associated with biodiversity now in relation to importance of biodiversity sacred groves are very important sacred groves are those places or patch of forest which are worshiped in india just imagine biodiversity is so much connected to human life that we have forest patches which are worshiped and considered to be sacred so um, in many parts of india and also across the world there are places in the forest which are worshiped it is believed that forest have some kind of tree spirit or one devtas and these uh, spirits or devtas or gods they are worshiped in forested region in fact we can say that sacred grove comprises of patches of forest or natural vegetation that are usually dedicated to local god or tree spirit one devtas now these forest could be very large and they could be very small also in number these sacred grove spaces are protected by local community because of their religious belief and traditional ritual that run through several generations now degree of sanctity of sacred forest varies from place to place in some part of our country we have complete prohibition of human interference so tribal people or local people maintain this highest degree of sanctity and they believe that any kind of harm done to the forest will affect them so they are very fearful of god for example garo and khasi tribe of northeast india do not allow any human interference they don't allow any kind of leaf to be picked from forest or any harm Uh, uh, to, done to the forest is not allowed on the other hand there are places where we find partial prohibition of human interference for example gonds of central india is the tribe which protect their forest area but the degree of sanctity is little less so they do allow picking up of dead leaves or dried fruit but they don't allow any kind of harm to be done on the trees or the forest area So this degree of sanctity varies but in all sacred forest we do observe that people are fearful of god and they are basically protecting the forest because they believe that any kind of damage to the forest would lead to some kind of um, disaster or their crop will fail to grow Overall in India we have around 1 lakh to 1.5 lakh sacred groves So this picture clearly tells us how many sacred groove we have for example in himachal pradesh 5000 sacred grooves maharashtra has around 2837 sacred grooves karnataka has 1531 sacred grooves and so on now there is ecological significance attached to sacred groove first a place which is protected will definitely have rich forest cover So in such area we find lot of floral that means plant diversity and faunal that means animal diversity. So the sacred groves are important repositories of floral and faunal diversity that have been conserved by local community in sustainable manner. Second, these forest groves they also have uh, ability to recharge aquifers. So a place where we find lot of forest we can expect that soil will be binded properly and amount of water that comes down through rainfall will seep underground and will help in recharging ground water table so a place where we have forest we do expect hydrological cycle is maintained and all pond stream springs are recharged through rain water so this helps in meeting the water requirement of local people and and vegetative cover also help in recharging the aquifers a place where we have forest cover which is protected and considered to be sacred definitely will have a better soil conservation trees bind soil and therefore the vegetation cover of sacred groove improves soil stability of the area and prevent soil erosion however at present sacred groves are facing lot of threat so patches of forest which are worshiped are also facing lot of threats first there is gradual disappearance of traditional belief so people are no longer considering sacred groves seriously they are considering these rituals and system just like a superstition second with rapid urbanization and developmental activity like construction of road railway dam commercial forestry etc 
we are intruding inside the sacred groove space and many uh, times we find that these sacred grooves are destroyed in the process of development many groups are also suffering due to the transformation of primitive form of nature worship into formal temple worship so no longer people are going inside forest to worship their god they do have a new mechanism of worshiping inside the formal temple many a times in sacred groove area or in forest patch we do find invasion by exotic weeds exotic weeds or unwanted plants or you can say invasive species for example lentana camara prosopis juliflora they are invasive species and they are serious threat to these groves these invasive species they multiply very fast and secrete toxic substances from their root so these toxic substances do not let growth of native flora so gradually the forest diversity deplete and thereby they are serious threat to the groves moreover there is pressure due to increasing livestock and fuel wood collection now let's see the biodiversity uh, at different areas so we can calculate biodiversity of di or diversity that exist on our earth at three different level global biodiversity second national level biodiversity and third regional level biodiversity so global biodiversity means variability of life form that exist overall on earth national level biodiversity means variability of life form that exist in our country and regional is at much smaller uh, scale so first global biodiversity global biodiversity is extremely high so at the level of entire world we know that there are around 50 million species out of which we just know about few of them so we just know about 1.5 million species only so there are different groups which have been identified by scientists like bacteria protozoan algae fungus higher plants sponges jellyfish flatworm snail insect mite fish amphibian reptile bird mammal so there is lot of diversity that exist at the level of world this biodiversity that exist at the level of world is maximum at the region of tropical evergreen forest temperate forest and aquatic region like ocean biodiversity also exist in india so there is tremendous biodiversity or variation in life form in india in fact india is considered as mega biodiverse country India has extremely rich biodiversity it holds the rank of 10th among plant rich countries of the world it is ranked 11th in terms of endemic species of higher vertebrate it is also at the rank of 6th among center of diversity and origin of agricultural crops so let's see few reasons why india is so rich in biodiversity so the first reason why india is rich in biodiversity can be associated with 10 biogeographical zones Second reason is India is center of origin for many plants. Third, India has many endemic species. Fourth, India has four hot spot of biodiversity. So let's study all these factors in detail. So India is mega biodiverse because of 10 biogeographical zones in the country. These 10 biogeographical zones are demarcated based on climatic condition, vegetation and faunal composition. So in India each place is unique. For example, if we consider Jammu Kashmir, it is extremely cold. And if we go to northeast part of the country, climatic conditions will vary. So in India, every corner of our country has a unique distinct kind of climatic condition which has resulted in evolution of set plants and animals. So considering this, overall biodiversity of India is extremely high. So these 10 biogeographical zones are first Trans Himalaya So Trans Himalaya is the region where we have Jammu Kashmir that means northern part of our country the climatic condition is extremely cold so only few species which can survive in extremely cold kind of climatic conditions are found in Trans Himalaya for example snow leopard alpine plants Himalayan balsam Second biogeographical zone is Himalayas. Himalayas include northwest part where we have Jammu Kashmir, Uttarakhand, Himachal region. 
Himalayas also include northeast part of our country. So Himalayan mountain range vary in the temperature and in Himalayas we find lot of diversity. In, in Himalayas we find large number of species for example pine tree which comes under coniferous forest, musk deer and rhododendron species. Third biogeographical zone is desert. Desert include parts of Rajasthan in India. So in desert the climatic condition is extremely hot. So this extremely harsh hot kind of climatic condition can support growth of certain plants. For example, we find cactus, we do find great Indian bustard species, chinkara, camel. So all these species are somewhat adapted to stay in harsh hot conditions of desert. Fourth biogeographical zone is semi-arid region which include parts of Rajasthan and Gujarat. In this area we find large number of species again. For example, Asiatic lion is endemic to Gujarat. We find it in Gir National Park of Gujarat. Second, Chinkara and there are many other coastal species which are associated with Gujarat or this semi-arid region. Fifth, bio biogeographical zone is Western Ghat. Western Ghat include parts of Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Kerala and this place has maximum diversity in terms of species number. So Western Ghat is also hottest spot of biodiversity in India and we find large number of unique endemic species of uh, in Western Ghat region. For example, in Western Ghat we find evergreen kinds of forest. The trees are very dense. Broadleaf trees are usually found in Western Ghat area. We have Loyan Tail Mecca which is one of the endemic species in Western Ghat and Asian Elephant are also found in Western Ghat region. Sixth biogeographical zone is Deccan Peninsula. So Deccan Peninsula includes central part of our country. It includes parts of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, etc. And this is the region which receives comparatively less rainfall if we compare it with Western Ghat. And this rainfall is supporting deciduous kind of trees. So in Deccan Peninsula we find a lot of deciduous trees which have particular characteristic that their leaf detach from the surface especially during the dry time period. We have lot of deers in Deccan Peninsula. Seventh, seventh biogeographical region is Gangetic Plain. So Gangetic Plain include parts of Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, uh, Bengal etc through which river, river Ganga flows. So in this Gangetic Plain we find large number of agricultural crop because Gangetic Plain is the region which is very fertile. So we find sugarcane cultivation, we do have Asian elephant in Uttarakhand and buffaloes and other kind of domesticated animals. Eighth biogeographical zone is the coastal region. So the coastal region that means eastern coast of our country include parts of Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and here the coastal diversity is very high. So we find large number of coastal or aquatic species for example mangrove trees fishes etc. Ninth biogeographical zone is in northeast. So this northeast biogeographical zone is again very rich in biodiversity. We all know that monsoon enters either from the side of Kerala or from northeast region. So there are places in northeast which receive extremely high rainfall like Chirapunji region. So in northeast we do find tropical rainforest and there are animals which are endemic to northeast like one horn rhinoceros orchids etc. Tenth biogeographical zone include island like Andaman island and Lakshadweep island. These islands are right in the center of water and thereby there is large diversity in the area of island. So we do have we do find lot of coral species in island region. There are large number of mangrove trees found in island areas and coconut trees. So these are the 10 biogeographical zone. In India we have a lot of diversity in terms of climatic condition, life form, faunal diversity and that makes our country quite unique in terms of biodiversity. So India is a mega biodiverse nation because of 10 biogeographical zones. So India is extremely rich in biodiversity because of 10 biogeographical zones 
and second reason why india is rich in plant and animal uh, species is due to center of origin so india has been center of origin for many plant and animal species for example rice rice that we eat every day has originated from india and then it got spread to china and other parts of asia it is believed that when alexander the great invaded india then he took various rice sample from our country and this is the reason how rice spread to other middle east country and from middle east many arab travelers visited europe and then rice got spread to other parts of europe so rice has the main center of origin as india brinjal is another species which has its origin from our own country same way black pepper is the main crop which has originated from india and then it got spread to other parts of the world so india is rich in biodiversity and is considered to be mega biodiverse because of uh, 10 biogeographical zone because of center of origin and the third reason is endemic species so there are large number of species which are found only in india and nowhere else they are present so that makes the composition of flora and fauna quite high in india so these endemic species are those which are restricted to a particular place so species which are restricted only to a particular place are known as endemic for example lion tailed mecca is endemic to western ghat of our country Asiatic lion is endemic to Gujarat. Nilgiri thar is endemic to southern India. So endemism helps in increasing the diversity of the country and thereby India is mega biodiverse nation. Now India is also considered to be mega biodiverse country because of the fourth reason that we have four hottest spot of biodiversity in the country itself. So biodiversity hotspot basically means a place where biodiversity is concentrated. Overall in the world we have large number of biodiversity hotspot which are marked in red color here in the map. So these hotspots of biodiversity are the places where plant and animal number is concentrated. So more of plants and animal are present in this area. So we can say that biodiversity is not uniformly present across the world but is more concentrated in certain part of the world. In India we have extremely high biodiversity because there are four hotspots within our own nation. So out of 36 hotspots which are present in the world four are located in India itself. So there are large number of hotspots for example we have Mediterranean basin Western African forest, Brazil Atlantic forest, and in India we have areas like Indo Burma, Western Ghat, Himalayas which are part of hotspots. So hotspot means area which exhibit extremely high number of species, and there is lot of species endemism. That means a place where the number of species is also very high, and the number of those species which are only restricted to that place and nowhere else found are also very high. So such area are known as hotspots of biodiversity. Term hotspot was introduced by scientist Norman Muir in the year 1988. And according to Norman Muir, the criteria of hotspot include following things. First, a place must contain at least 1500 species of vascular plant in that region. So out of total vascular plant which are present in the world, at least 1500 should be present in that area to be considered as hotspot and those species which are present should be more endemic to the place second it has to have lost more than 70% of its original native habitat so the point is that these hotspot have high species number high number of endemic species also plus there is some kind of threat which is posing the risk to these endemic species and then we can classify that area as hotspot in india we have four hotspots so out of 36 hotspot that exist in the world we have four in india and these four are first himalayan region so himalayas of northwest side which include parts of jammu kashmir uttarakhand himachal area and also himalayas of the eastern side are included in this category second ho second hotspot of biodiversity is western ghat so western ghat include parts of maharashtra karnataka kerala tamil nadu 
and this is extremely rich area in terms of plant animal number third hotspot of biodiversity is indo burma so indo burma region is extremely high in plant and animal number so since hotspots are recognized internationally indo burma include part of india and also part of other country like myanmar for the sunda land again this is one of the hotspot which is internationally demarcated so from our country we have uh, nicobar island included in sunda land but there are other countries like malaysia philippines which are part of sunda land let's study first himalayan hotspot of biodiversity so the first area where we find rich composition of plant and animal is known as himalayas so himalayan hotspot stretch in an arc over 3000 kilometers of northern pakistan nepal bhutan north west and northeast state of the country so in north west we include jammu kashmir himachal uttarakhand in northeast we include uh, himalayas for example in the place of sikkim so himalayan mountain ridge cover almost 7 uh, lakh 50000 km square and it is divided into two region eastern himalayas and western himalayas so eastern himalaya include parts of sikkim and other northeast states western himalayas include parts of jammu kashmir uttarakhand himachal etc so the geographical position physiography climatic and altitudinal variation of himalayas have contributed to high level of plant diversity and endemism so the climatic condition is such that lot of species have become endemic to this place second western ghat so second hot spot of biodiversity is western ghat western ghat include parts of maharashtra karnataka kerala goa etc so in this region of our country we find extremely high level of biodiversity so western ghat extend along 17000 km square strip of forest which include maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu kerala at least 40% of species are endemic plants we also have 62% amphibians endemic only to western ghat 50% of lizard are found only in western ghat and nowhere else present we do find forest track up to 500 meter elevation and it cover 20% of the forest so forest in western ghat include evergreen forest also if you go up on the mountain range which are present in western ghat so at the level of 500 to 1500 meter range there are even semi evergreen forest main center of diversity are agastha malai hill and silent valley region lot of uh, area lot of species which are present in western ghat are endemic but the point is that these western ghat are also facing threat 6.8% of original forest are present today and they are also facing the risk of deforestation because uh, and because of rapid urbanization so there is a serious uh, risk that these is, these areas where we have rich number of species might be lost very soon and that will lead to loss of biodiversity third hot spot is indo burma indo burma is included in parts of myanmar thailand vietnam from our country we include two region in indo burma first northeast part and second andaman region so indo burma hot spot covers very high area of tropical asia it include eastern bangladesh it also include northeast part from our own country it include myanmar parts of china laos vietnam cambodia thailand Malaysia and Andaman region so this entire stretch is part of Indo Burma region from our country we include northeast india and andaman island in this region in this area we find large number of mixed wet evergreen forest dry evergreen deciduous and montane forest we also do find shrubland and woodland in addition a wide variety of this place also include a uh, lowland flood plain swamps mangrove vegetation and grassland fourth hot spot of biodiversity in india is sunda land sunda sunda land include parts of philippine indonesia singapore from our country india nicobar island is included in sunda land 
So Sunda land include Nicobar Island, but it also include other countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines. It is one of the richest biological hotspot. It hold 25,000 species of vascular plant, 15,000 of which are present only here and nowhere else. But right now, these Sunda land region is facing lot of destruction. Lot of industries like rubber production industry, pulp industry, commercial uh, industries, other commercial industries are uh, requiring resources from these forests, and these forests are therefore depleting. So, threat to the forest of this region is definitely going to affect the biodiversity of the place. So, in sum total, we can say that biodiversity of our country is extremely high, and the reason why the biodiversity of India is very high is due to a uh, following reason first in india we have 10 biogeographical zone second in india there are large number of endemic species third we have center of origin of plants in india fourth india has four hot spot of biodiversity not only this india has a long coastline and this coastline adds to the overall biodiversity of the country we have large number of coastal aquatic species included in our biodiversity And to summarize we can say that india is extremely rich in biodiversity and thereby it is considered to be a mega biodiverse nation let's study biodiversity at regional level regional level means at a very small level so at very local or small level we can calculate biodiversity by following ways first alpha richness second beta richness and third gamma richness Alpha richness include number of species which are found in homogeneous area. Let's take this as an area. So the alpha richness is equal to four species in a particular place. So alpha richness means calculation of the species present in a place. Beta richness include rate of change of species across an environmental gradient. Let's take this mountain. And if we want to note how with altitude there is variation in a species. then we can go ahead with beta richness so we for this we can calculate alpha at foothill that means how many species are present at the foothill so if you calculate here there are four so alpha richness here at foothill is four species per unit area and with altitude that means uh, how with height the species composition is changing we can pick another site let's say mountain top in mountain top we are observing only one species So alpha at the top is just one species per unit area. So beta represent rate of change of species across across an environmental gradient. An environmental gradient in this case is altitude. So overall beta is equal to alpha one minus alpha two. That means it's equal to four minus one. That that is three species per unit area in this example. Let's take another example. So beta richness is used as a parameter to judge the local richness of a place. Now we can also say that if we are interested in understanding how species vary across a uh, latitude or longitude, we can use this parameter. For example, if we are interested in latitude, let's say at the pole the number of species is just one. But at equator, we are observing large number of species. Let's calculate them quickly. so there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 species so alpha here at equator is 6 species so to calculate beta we will subtract the 2 and this will come out to be 6 minus 1 that is 5 species per unit area so beta richness is the parameter which is used when we are interested in understanding how species composition is changing across a particular environmental gradient last way by which we can calculate a uh, species across a large landscape is gamma richness so in gamma richness the landscape or the area is slightly more as compared to beta or alpha so if we are interested in calculating composition of a species in entire mountain region then we can use gamma richness and this will be here if you just analyze it it's equal to 5 species So these are the ways by which we can calculate regional biodiversity. So we have completed first definition of biodiversity that is uh, what is biodiversity we have completed genetic species and ecosystem level biodiversity 
we now know why india is mega biodiverse nation what are the different 10 biogeographical zones of the country what are the four hot spots that are present in the country we also know endemic species and endangered species we will be uh, we will be discussing iucn in the next video we have also completed value of biodiversity that means the importance attached to plants and animal so uh, we will be discussing in the next video threats to biodiversity biodiversity conservation strategies and different case studies